This case is one of the four cases establishing unconscionable conduct as the basis of modern Australian equity law. Vincenzo Amadio was a land developer. He had exceeded his overdraft limits with the commercial bank by $100,000, and remember this was in the late 1970s. However, his business was considered extremely important to his local branch of the bank, not only because of the size of the loans, but also because of the home loan customers that he introduced to the bank. Eventually, though, Amadio's business faced a severe cash flow crisis. The bank agreed to continue underwriting the loans, provided Mr. Amadio gave them some security. He proposed, as security, his parents' interest in a small commercial property containing shops. The bank agreed. This meant the older Amadios putting up their building so that the bank could take it if Vincenzo defaulted on his loans. A bank officer went round so the Amadios could sign the mortgage documents. Mr. Amadio spoke reasonable English, but Mrs. Amadio spoke only basic English. Neither of them had any real ability to read or write English. They had been told by Vincenzo that their liability was limited to $50,000 for six months. In fact, the document committed them to permanent, unlimited liability. They were not given a detailed explanation of the documents, and they were not given any opportunity to obtain independent advice. You can guess what happened next. Vincenzo's business failed, and the bank called in the guarantee. The older Amadios argued that they should not be held to their guarantee because the bank had acted unconscionably in accepting it. Justice Dean, in the leading judgment, described two principles for unconscionable conduct. The first was that it protected a party who, quote, was under a special disability in dealing with the other party with the consequences that there was an absence of any reasonable degree of equality between them. The Amadios, with their limited English, were certainly under such a disability. The second principle was that the disability was sufficiently evident to the stronger party to make it unconscientious that he procure or accept the weaker party's assent. If that was the case, then the stronger party would have to bring evidence to show that the bargain was fair, just and reasonable. He found that in this case, the commercial bank brought no such evidence. They could not enforce the guarantee provided by the Amadios. Mm -hmm.